Hey everybody, how you doing out there? I got some new Tops Project 2020 in the mail today, and this is a big mail day. I guess I have maybe a quarter of the Project 2020. There's 400 of them. I, I have more than I thought, and I guess, you know, getting them two at a time and not having them matriculate in the mail for a while, then you order more, and then you realize, oh, they start coming in. And my wife is telling me, she's like, how many of these did you order? They seem to be coming in like every day. And then I got um, six of them in the mail today. So today we have one, two, three, four, five. It looks like 10 that we're going to be going through. Um, I took them out of the original packaging and they are going to be new to me. So I'm not exactly sure what we're going to be opening in what order. Um, so I'm just going to start and go from there. Well, that one fell over. So let's go with that one see what we have here oh and they put it in another wrapper but i'm going to take it out of there i don't necessarily need two layers of protection all right so we got cal ripkin jr um it looks like uh bird feathers or something like that and then these flowers uh i'm not sure if i'm supposed to get a raven or hawaiian theme but it's the baltimore oriole so maybe it's an oriole um and not a raven because that would make more sense duh um and this one is done by matt taylor uk based designer and illustrator matt taylor well known for his vividly designed film and event posters okay event posters that 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 makes sense his use of color shatters the known universe bringing this wide array of pop culture subjects alive Extensive array of clients include 20th Century Fox, Jack White, Lucasfilm, Marvel, Pearl Jam, Fish, and Queens of the Stone Age. All right. Cal Ripken Jr., the Iron Man himself. Gonna leave that in the background. Let's go to this one that I was going to get originally. Okay, this one doesn't have the same bag, double bagging. This is Ricky Henderson. A's. It's um, more of like a artist cartoon um, pastel um, version, like a watercolor version almost. I do like kind of the comic book esque, um, you know, font or background here. It's very interesting. So, who did this one? This is by Jacob Rochester. Jacob Rochester is what many call an artist's artist. The bi-coastal creative doesn't just create wonderful illustration paintings and graphics, but Rochester also knows a thing or two about producing mesmerizing beats that can easily impress the most dedicated hip-hop head. Very nice. I like that one. So, too far, we don't have a, um, a repeat, meaning like an artist that's been doubled up yet thus far and i noticed that a lot of times um you know i've been getting a lot i mean by now obviously i've doubled up on certain these like i feel like i've read each of those descriptions at least once by now oh wow check out this dope tony gwynn it's got like uh you know like a spray paint west coast design each coast when they say by coastal they mean you know california west coast new york city you know more so east coast um, but it could be Boston and, and the cities on the East Coast, D.C. and stuff. But that typically is referring to L.A., New York. So this one is done by Gregory Siff, Brooklyn-born, L.A.-based artist. Gregory Siff is renowned for his blend of pop art and abstract expressionism. His work exhibits meaning that is literally open for interpretation of nostalgia and childhood. Siff has collaborated with St. Laurent, Mercedes-Benz, MLB, Vans, and Adidas, among many other global brands. Gregory Siff. I like this one. I like the colors. Um, I like everything about it, really. I mean, you got a little cassette here. It tells you it's like 80s, 90s. Tony Outfield, Padres, uh, Project 2020. And then you have Gregory for Gregory Siff, San Diego logo. You're looking really good. I like that one. So far, that's that's one of my favorites. I'm hoping that, I don't know when it's coming in the mail, but I'm really hoping for the uh, Mark McGuire that looks like a Big Mac, and then it says Big Mac on it. I mean, that is hilarious. So who do we have here? Uh, looks like Roberto Clemente. Wow, there's a lot going on on this one. So Roberto 
when I showed this to my wife online, uh, her interpretation, she really likes this card. And her interpretation of it is Roberto Clemente looking back at his entire career. Let's see if I can um, get more of the finer details. You see on the right hand side here, the Puerto Rican flag. He is of Puerto Rican descent. You have Puerto Rico here. On the left side, we have the Pirates as the 1971 World Champions. So, I mean, this has a lot going on. It's a beautiful card. This one is done by, oh, Andrew Thiel. Oh, okay, he has come out as one of my favorite um, artists so far. One of my top three. Um, Andrew Thiel is a multidiscipline artist based out of New York City. His design studio, Art Tech Creative, works within music, fashion, and nightlife. He has collaborated with some of the largest brands in the world. Thiel is recognized among the art world for his large-scale texture paintings and has had two solo shows and a published book i like that one now i like having the cards you know out like this um and i'm not sure how people are displaying their project 2020 you know are you guys putting them on a shelf are you you know making space on a wall in your room or office uh how are you guys going you know about making sure that you don't just put these away in your project 2020 boxes like we do with our common cards because these are anything but common wow okay so when this came out i don't think it was covid related i think this is more so dr k and the doctor is in you know like he's wearing his doctor outfit and on the left you see um what is that the stethoscope so Dr. K for his strikeout ability of a flaming fastball here. You see little things, uh, 1985 EF Doc, is that what it says? And then on the back, oh, it's F dot, F dot. Okay, so that's the artist. F dot is a Brooklyn-based artist who specializes in site-specific murals and hand-drawn art. He champions an abstract meets figurative style for his vivid and whimsical compositions and has spearheaded collaborations with brands like we work and made well so you can see f but f doc okay so he didn't i didn't misread that the first time and then f dot down at the bottom very nice not the biggest um you know i tend to follow and collect hall of famers but that doc gooden was too good to pass up i really enjoyed the design um you know Dokken had a, a lot of substance abuse issues and things like that and he still does to this day so it's kind of a sad story um but anyway great card great tribute to him and moving on we have another take of this mariano rivera rookie card now you see the other cards behind me, they took, you know, more drastic changes, except for the Ricky Henderson is not as drastic. The Cal Ripken, that's very different, a departure from the original card. The Tony Gwynn, so much. Um, the Roberto Clemente and the Doc Gooden. But this one is a very simplified version of the original Bowman card. I think it's a 91 Bowman, if I'm not mistaken. This one was done by Blake Jameson. He's another one of my top three. And um, Ermsey would round out the top three for me out of the bunch. New York pop portrait artist Blake Jameson works with celebrities, professional athletes, tech founders to create vibrant, one-of-a-kind works of art. Jameson collectors include Howie Mandel, Rick Harrison, Gary Vaynerchuk, and over 350 professional athletes, NFL, NBA, and MLB. Now, I think I read an article today, uh, I'm not sure if it was Beckett that put it out, that was talking about talking and interviewing Blake Jameson on his Project 2020 and how he's reflected on it. And he's been collaborating, um, not collaborating, but communicating with other artists and he wants to collaborate on other projects as a result of this project. One of the things he's been talking about has been taking common cards... That, and we don't, what I mean by common cards, that signifies it's a non-MVP, non-potential Hall of Famer, just a, 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 a player who is in the major leagues that's not in the top, not on the bottom, but it's just their value of that card. It's made in, in mass or there's so many of them that they don't hold or retain high value. So a common card, uh, let's say we were talking about the New York Yankees 
when he first came out, maybe Luke Voigt wasn't a common. That was a hot card. It went for about $5. But maybe today it would go in my particular commons pile, but Aaron Judge would not. Um, Gio Urshela, third base, would be considered. So here we have Ted Williams. And this is a nice card. There's a lot of detail to this one, too. So with a lot of these, you have to take your time. You got to look. You got to read the fine print, which I will be doing on this one. I'm not going to do it now because my camera can't pick it up. And this one was done by Tyson Beck, considered an industry leader in the world of sports design. Tyson Beck counts major American leagues such as the NBA, MLB, NFL, NHL, clients of his, alongside global brands such as Nike, Adidas, and Under Armour. Now, I'm a big Yankees fan. So you have to do a really good job to get me to buy a Boston Red Sox uh, memorabilia. But Ted Williams was one of the most prolific hitters in the history of the game. And given the fact that he lost years to, you know, World War II and, and all that kind of stuff, is just like, it adds even more to his story. Who do we have here? We got Don... Don Mattingly. Like, okay, like the Don, like in uh, The Godfather. When I first saw this card, um, to me, it looked like the championship ring that Don Mattingly never got because, you know, I don't, I think, I don't think he ever had an opportunity to even play in a World Series. And if he did, it's escaping me at this time, probably the strike year, if anything. But, you know, anyway, I'm going to continue. It's another Andrew Thiel. Is this, is this an Andrew Thiel here, right here? Andrew Thiel. So, yeah, you could see you know um you could start to see the style of a particular artist after collecting uh, a few of their cards i'm gonna put those together up there up top on my second level we got two more left of the project 2020 Ooh, it's like a robotic uh mike trout as cyclops from the x-men or something like that maybe because he has such insane vision but it's only coming out of one eye, like, what was it, Galactus at the end of, maybe I'm saying the wrong planet, um, but at the end of Transformers, the movie, the, oh, Unicron, when Unicron was, like, dying because the Transformers had, uh, I think it was, a uh, who was it, Dinobot, one of the Dinobots had crashed through his other eye and he was just shooting laser beams out the one remaining. If nobody knows what I'm talking about, do forgive me, my references can be here or there, but it's like a 80s, early 90s um, cartoon movie from the original Transformers. Anywho, um, black and white. I think this is the tattoo artist. I forget their his his or her name. JK5, Joseph Ari El Eloy, Eloy, El I can't pronounce that last name. AKA JK5, which is why there's an AKA. Is a multidisciplinary artist known for his unbridled creativity and distinct approach to tattooing, design, illustrating, painting, type, graphics, writing, and letter forms. He has worked with brands including Nike, Converse, and Kid Robot while also showing galleries and publishing three books. I just saw a movie, The King of Staten Island, with uh, Pete Davidson, and in that movie he's trying to become a tattoo artist. And... He himself, it is his whole body is like full of tattoos. So right away when you see, or if you were ever into tattoos or know anybody that is, when you look at this artist, JK5, you could tell. Like, oh, that guy's a tattoo artist. I don't know why, but it just stands out. Love it. It's almost, you know, it's, I just love it. You could do that with any player and, and that would look really cool. Um, it's hard to see it's out of focus right now, but... I mean, these cards are just great, but this this one, maybe because it's black and white, um, I tend to like black and white. I, I used to do a lot of pen and ink, so I have a lot of appreciation for that. Not that there's anything wrong with... Uh, obviously, I love these other ones in their own respect, but I have a high regard for the pen and ink. Okay, so the last one for today is Bob Gibson, and it has this, like combination of the original 19 uh was it 56 i want to say but I, again i'm not completely accurate with the vintage cards um but this is the bob gibson card um but with different font obviously um the background and the lettering 
at the bottom. It says 19, oh, maybe it's a 68 design because it says 1968 year of the pitcher, uh, Bob Gibson, St. Louis Cardinals. And this is done by King Saladin. King Saladin is a world-renowned contemporary artist from West Philadelphia, born and raised, who works are exhibited all over the world. King Saladin is revered for creating the Money Bear, which pays homage to his childhood friend JP, who he tragically lost in 2013. Beautiful cards. So I should have another shipment similar to this amount coming in, and then that should round out my project 2020. There are 400 Project 2020 cards. Um, early on, they you know they didn't catch on until people started selling the Trout Ermsey for like three thousand dollars. Probably now you, you know eight, nine, a thousand dollars if you're lucky. But it's not a about the money i know the hobby has gone in that direction maybe it's the times we're in um maybe it is that kind of trend where it's like a stock market you see things like StockX and um all these folks talking about baseball cards like like day traders talk about you know the s p 500 or uh the dow jones industrial average and it's like hey guys these are pieces of paper on cardboard i used to think it would only be value if it was numbered or autographed. And now I get a number card, I look it up, and it's like, oh, yeah, it's a dollar twenty-five. They're a dime a dozen. And you get an auto, and you're like, oh, I got a rookie auto. Oh, my God. And it's like $2. But, you know, the mainstays are the Hall of Famers, the Mike Trouts of the world. You know, those are never going to go out of style, out of fashion. But these cards are so cool, and I just wish I could find a way to display them. So if you guys are displaying your Project 2020 in a cool way, could you just send a picture and post it to the comments or send me a link to your video, uh, to this video, so that way when I look back and I'm like, okay, how can I upgrade or update my office here? Because if, all right, I'm going to pan around. I usually don't do this, but I'm going to pan around so you could see. All right, here's my office. I got collectibles, um, you know, travel, like Marvel stuff, Spider-Man stuff, video game things, ba signed baseballs and Hall of Famers, memorabilia, movies, you know, all sorts of stuff. Um, artwork, there's my baseball, Donnie, I call him Donnie Baseball, you know, Simpsons and things like that. So when I'm decorating... You know, I have a lot of empty wall space that I can utilize. Like, like Star Wars figurines. Sorry, I'm a Jets fan. Things of that nature. Um, but, yeah, it would be really nice to find a place to really showcase these as they are more than just cards and their works of art. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is a longer video than I had intended. But I was really looking forward to um, this mailer. Because I thought I was going to get um, a, a, a couple of different cards. But that's exciting because that means they're forthcoming. And I'll do another one of these. So thanks for checking this out. Again, please let me know if you are displaying your Project 2020. I need some inspiration. Alright, take care guys. Peace out.